I'm Neek, the Education Coordinator for Grand Staircase Escalante Partners, and today I'd like to introduce you to a native plant. This tree, the Utah Juniper, or Juniperus osteosperma, is a common sight on the Colorado Plateau. The Utah Juniper has dark green, flat, and scaly leaves that remain on the tree year-round. Gray or light brown bark that often hangs loose in strips, and a rounded crown. This tree grows very slowly, rarely exceeding 30 feet in height, even though the trees typically live between 350 to 700 years. If you've been out hiking in this region, you've perhaps recognized the juniper by its bluish juniper berries. This fruit of the tree is not actually a berry, but rather a tiny pine cone covered with a drought-resistant waxy coating. In contrast to the dioecious Rocky Mountain juniper, in which each tree bears either male or female cones, the Utah juniper is monoecious, which means that it has both male and female parts on the same tree. The berry is the ovulate or female cone, while the staminate or male cones appear as tiny pollen cones on the end of the twig tip. The juniper tree grows at elevations between 4,000 and 7,500 feet, typically on plains and plateaus with well-drained alkaline soil. This species has a number of adaptations that make it well suited for the arid environment of this region. Junipers concentrate limited soil moisture and organic material beneath their canopy, creating islands that are nutrient rich compared to the surrounding areas. They can withstand drought conditions that often kill other plants, in part due to a massive underground root system that can account for two thirds of a tree's total mass. These roots have a great capacity for reaching water. The tap root can penetrate 25 feet down and the tree can send lateral roots 100 feet or more from the tree. In the event of drought, juniper trees can self-prune outer branches to conserve water and increase its own chances of survival. In the high desert ecosystem, Utah junipers provide shelter and cover for mule deer and bighorn sheep. The juniper berries provide food for jackrabbits, foxes, coyotes, and many birds. The juniper has also been an important species for humans. Native tribes in the Southwest have long used juniper berries, twigs, and branches for medicinal purposes, treating coughs, stomach aches, headaches, and rheumatism. The rot-resistant wood has also been used to build structures by both native and pioneer communities. The soft bark has been used as bedding, toilet paper, and when tightly twisted, as a slow-burning mat. Today, pinyon juniper woodlands cover millions of acres in the southwest and account for up to 15% of the land area in Utah. The range and density of pinyon juniper woodlands has increased dramatically in the last 150 years. Juniper seedlings got an edge when the density of competing grasses and other plants were reduced by cattle and sheep grazing, resulting in shifts from grassland to woodland. Additionally, more junipers have survived to adulthood in the last century because of the suppression of natural fire regimes. Juniper berries are covered in a thin layer of natural yeast. So today, I'm going to collect some and use them to create a sourdough starter. We'll see how it goes. 